slide already. Okay, we will, we're gonna begin our service this morning. Welcome those who are in the sanctuary right now and also who are joining us online uh, by Zoom. So welcome everyone, Where, wherever you are, we are in the presence of God. So friends, this is, the, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us begin with the call to worship, taken from Psalm 139. Please respond in the yellow portion. Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and I acquaint it with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful to be for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. But it was you who form my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. Let us join our hearts for the opening prayer. Weaver of life, framer of the ages, we marvel at your artistry and the trust you place in us. From our first cries to our final breath, we are yours. Find us now to each other in ways beyond our choosing, that your purpose may find fulfillment in our common life and service. For we pray in the name of Jesus, the firstborn of all creation. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 686, God of Our Life. God of our life, through all the circling years, we trust in Thee. In all the past, through all our hopes and fears, Thy hand we see. With each new day, when morning lifts the veil, we don't thy mercies, Lord, which never fails. God of the past, how time now in thy hand, with the abide. Lead us by faith to hope's true promised land, be thou thou guide. With thee to bless the darkness shines as light As faith and vision changes into sight God of the coming years through paths unknown We follow thee When we are strong Lord, leave us not alone, our refuge be. Be thou for us in 
life our daily bread, our hearts to home when all our years have spent. Amen. You may be seated. Our God is faithful and lavishly gracious. God is willing to embrace us and offer us new opportunity to receive God's blessing. In penitence and in faith, let us confess our sins to the one who waits for our mercy upon us. Let us, do, let us pray the prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess that we fail to put our trust in you completely. Instead, we calculate our gains and losses, hoarding the things that do not lead to abundant life. Forgive us and help us to treasure only you, that we may follow you faithfully and discover the blessing only you can give. Amen. Friends, if anyone is in Christ, we are a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. In the name of the Christ, our sins are forgiven and our lives are made new. Thanks be to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Whereas Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give what the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. Friends, let us share signs of this peace that is offered by Christ and the love of God with our brothers and sisters. Let us turn to our neighbors, extend signs of peace to one another. Peace be with you all. Carrie and Paul is on the phone. Peace be with you, Brian. Please be seated. <clears throat> Our scripture reading this morning from, comes from the Old Testament prophet of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1. To 11. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 1 to 11. Listen to the word of God. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's head, and he reworked it into another vessel that seemed good to him. And the word of the Lord came to me, can I not do with you, O house of Israel? Just as this potter has done, says the Lord, just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. 
But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turn from, turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disasters that I intended to bring upon it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if, I does, if it does not, if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intend to do with it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord, look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God. One of my friends this past week posted on his Facebook page, uh, he was saying that he was trying to sell his 10 year old car online uh, on, to an online used car dealership. And he received this great offer that was too good to be true. He couldn't believe the, the value, how much his used car is still worth. The 10 year old car, I think he, he said he spent 18,000 originally it was used, so this is a second time. But the offer was close to around 13,000. So over 10 years, the, only, the value only depreciated about $5,000, which was a pretty good deal for a used car. I don't know the detail about the car, but, but he thought that was a good price. As you, know, as you know, used cars are in high demand these days for those who drive especially since the pandemic. And even in spite of the, the recent high uh, gas prices, old cars are less gas efficient than the newer ones. People are willing to buy up used cars, old cars, to make necessary repairs and then use them on their own or sell it for market price or higher price. This whole experience of my friends make me wonder how sometimes the value of certain things that may not appear that what's their value and, and what's their actual worth based on their appearance. What appears to be aged and useless or worn out or seem may have little or no value whatsoever can still be val valued or salvaged and it retained its worth, if only giving the second chance. From our spiritual point of view, we can also imagine how our own personal worthiness, spiritual worthiness, that in spite of our personal imperfections, our spiritual bankruptcies or lack thereof, God continues to see our personal growth and value within us. God is still willing to give us a second chance. We are worth the effort of salvaging, refurbishing, and an opportunity for renewal as God continues to remold us and shape us into the persons who God intended us to be. In the passage that we read earlier from Jeremiah, God sent an important message to the people that in spite of their past sinfulness, their disobedience and unfaithfulness, God remains sovereignly in control of their lives and was willing to give them a second chance to rekindle that relationship that they once had. people were 
being compared to as a lump of clay in the potter's hands. They become malleable to God's creativity and imagination. On one hand, if God chooses so, God can break things down and tear things apart and start over from scratch. But on the other hand, God can also rebuild, replant, and redeem, build something better as God extends God's unconditional grace and forgiveness for those who sincerely turn from evil and the wicked way. God called upon this young prophet Jeremiah to deliver this stern warning against the people of Israel, pleading to them and turn their ways back to God, confessing their sins. This is a recurring theme throughout the history of the Hebrew people. Not the first time that this happened, and, and certainly this was not the last time either. But God repeatedly gave the people second chance, third chance, as sinful and as disobedient as they were. God's call for repentance eventually led to the forgiveness and redemption from the divine. This pattern gets repeated over and over and again throughout the history. It's easier for us to look back and say, why haven't the people changed? Why haven't people learned from their past? But look, let's look more on the other side, from the generous, generous side, that why did God give people so many chances to redeem themselves and to return back to God? Were the people spoiled by God's generosity and extended mercy and love? One simple solution, one simple answer is that God still loved his people in spite of their sinfulness. In our passage this morning, the image of the lump of clay was used to contrast the lives of the people. The potter was making a vessel with, behind the potter's wheel. But this was no ordinary clay. This clay was oil and was embedded with many broken pieces of an older vessel. Now, I'm not a potter or anything. I, I, I don't know how it actually works, but, but we are not, that the potter knew that this clay is not perfect. Through the hands of this potter, fragmented pieces are being grinded in refine and repurpose into something useful once again. We are all a part, we are a part of clay dedicated for God's use at the expense and the workmanship of the potter, our creator. The potter was behind the wheel and has complete control of what he wanted to do. He can either rework it and form something totally new, or he could break it down and abandon it altogether. The potter can also decide that it's not worth it to fix it, or it's a waste of time in salvaging something that is no longer worth anything. The cost of reparation outweighs the benefit. It has zero salvage value. For those of you who know anything about junk cars, there is no such thing as a junk car. Every part of a so-called junk car is worth something. Even the window that's still not broken is worth something. You can break down the parts. It's worth more than the actual car as a whole. 
down to the bare metal scraps are still worth something. As reluctant that it may be, God is willing to painfully destroy what has been created and recreate it from scratch once again. God did this throughout through the great flood of Noah. In the New Living Translation of Jeremiah 18.4, it's translated as, but the jar he was making did not turn out as he had hoped. So the potter squashed the jar into a lump of clay and started again. Oftentimes, we might feel like a lump of clay. Perhaps some of you are feeling that way right now. Not knowing what was going on, what we have become, that we have lost our sense of purpose or meaning. We are shapeless, formless, and disorganized, yet at the complete disposal and the mercy of the potter our creator. The potter is willing to break us down, refurbish us and rework us from scratch, turn us, turning us that may be seemingly worthless into something that is precious and purpose in God's sight. You may think that you are as low as you can get, but God may think otherwise. God is willing to scoop you up and remold you and shape, reshape you and refurbish you into something meaningful and purposeful. When the people sinned, it broke God's hearts. Reluctantly, God sends judgment upon the people, not only to, not just to punish them, but to teach them a lesson so that they, do, they will not do it again as God demonstrates God's extended mercy and grace. Just like a parent punishing his or her own children if they've done something wrong, God has offered the people ample opportunities to repent and to be, and to be redeemed. Now let's fast forward to today. Can you imagine how God feels right now when God sees all the problems and issues that, that we face in our society today. The consequences of our climate due to our own selfish misbehaviors or past neglect of our environment. How we antagonize and perpetrate hate and evil against one another how we wage war and disrupt peace against our neighbors. We pay little or no attention, disregard the value of human lives, or have failed to live up to our calling as stewards of God's resources entrusted to us. We wage spiritual war against one another, failing to bear one another a mutual love and to demonstrate the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. As the book of Ecclesiastes reminded us that for everything there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. The question is not so much of what God can do, but whether or not we would come to our own conscience, awake ourselves and do what is necessary to return back to God. Are we willing to let God break us down and rework us from within into something special? Or do we retain our own stubborn hearts, unwilling to let God 
mold us and shape us. As we read in our call to worship this morning, uh, you may go back and reread that again from Psalm 139. The, paint, the psalmist painted us this beautiful imagery of our intimate relationship with God, declaring that God has searched us and known us, both inside and out. God knows our every inner thoughts when we are sitting down and when we're rising up. God knows our very words, both spoken and unspoken, on our lips and in our hearts. As God knit us together, intricately in our mother's womb, that the potter who must spend time with his clay in order to make his perfect vessel. Like the potter behind the wheel, we must be willing to invest our creativity and imagination in order to make things work. As Presbyterians, we believe that we are reform and always reforming according to the word of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Our lives are nothing but a constant work in progress. Later on, we will once again come before God's table of grace in the communion of our faith and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. As often we partake these elements of the bread and the cup, in which we, in whichever form that may be, we are reminded that nothing separates us from the love of God, and God is still with us and allows the Holy Spirit to be rekindled once again in our lives. Our God may be, our lives may be refurbished, but are rekindled by the Holy Spirit, rededicated for the use of God's purpose implanted within us. God will continue to mold us and shape our lives into something purposeful and fruitful for the kingdom of God. Furthermore, we also need to look out for one another. At times we may be called upon to be the potters who would help refurbish someone's brokenness, to restore the wholeness and purpose of new life through the leading and the grace of God. As God empowers us, and embolden us to be the shapers and molders of people. As Mother Teresa once said, that we are only a little pencil in the hand of the writing God who is sending a love letter to the world. That God has called upon each one of us to be God's messenger of hope and love in this world a world that is in constant need of mending, repair, and renew each day as we restore hope and peace in this broken and fragmented world that we live. In closing, I would like to share with you this poem entitled The Potter's Hand by Mary Marilyn Ferguson. Pull up the screen on it. You see that too. This is the poem, uh, the potter's wheel call. When you are troubled and discouraged in the darkness of the night, when obstruction clouds your vision and you just can't see the light, when life's trials become, overcome you and you have nowhere to turn, when you've reached the very bottom, there are lessons you must learn. For the clay is being molded. It's been twisted, pulled and tossed. 
it's been rolled and it's been pounded till the ego has been lost. He will put you through the furnace. You'll be tested into the brim. Your life will be in pieces till you give your soul to him. From brainish to perfection, his hands will form the clay. This human piece of rubble must let God have his way. When you come to him all battered in the form of mortal man, when you cry to him in mercy, you will find the potter's hand. In the name of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, le I left one foot. He will grind you, mold you, and chisel the fictions you will find till he gently carves and shapes you upon the potter's wheel. Amen. Let us now respond by singing hymn number 213. In the cross of Christ I glory. In the cross of Christ I glory, how in all the wrecks of time, all the lies of sacred story gathers round its head the blind. When the woes of life overtake me, hopes be seen and fears annoy, never shall the cross forsake me, Lord is close with peace and joy. When the sun of faith is beaming, life and love upon my way. From the cross the radiance is streaming, as for us the to the day. Amen, blessing, pain, and pleasure by the cross are sanctified. Peace is there that knows no measure, joys that through all time abide. In the cross of Christ I glory, towering of the wrecks of time, all the lights of sacred story gathers round its head the blind. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> now is the time um, that we'll do a little quick check in with one another. Uh, if you have any, any uh, prayer request, prayer request, or th prayer of thanksgiving, uh, you may lift up as well. So let me just grab a pen first. I will begin uh, with 
anyone who is in the sanctuary right now, if you have any uh, prayer requests, uh, prayer of thanksgiving or joy that you want to lift up. Uh, yes, Stephen? Michael Taylor? Yeah. Yep. This is your brother-in-law, right? Michael Houston and Taylor. Yes, uh, Ray? Uh, pray for the schools. Uh, I know uh, those who are either working in the school or um, and those who are children, the grandchildren who are attending public school, they're starting school this week. So uh, I know it's exciting, but it's also sometimes can be uh, nerve wracking as well. Um, so pray for the staff uh, and also for the students as they start the new school year. Uh, yes, Ken. Pakistan. It's funny, right? I also understand that uh, the uh, starting this week, the, the new vaccine is available. Uh, I think starting Tuesday, uh, that's specifically here for the, uh, the, the current way, the dominant uh, strand of the BA4 and BA5. So anyone who's age 12 or over are eligible to receive that. So uh, for those who have received vaccines before, if you could just sign on to go to any pharmacies, uh, you could just, you can do it, walk in. So I, anyone you know, encouraged to get your updated uh, booster shots. Uh, as we enter the fall season, they're, they're anticipating another wave of that. Uh, people having more uh, indoor uh, activities and things like that. So please get your uh, vaccinations updated. Uh, Harry, do you want to say a few words? You have to unmute yourself. Yes. Thank God. For hear, wait, hold on. Can you hear Harry? Say a few words, please. Can you yes. Hear Harry? Can you, can you hear something? me? Yes, I am talking now. Can you hear me? Okay. Well, if, we're having, if we're having problems technologically, we can put it off, but I'm talking loud and clear. I'm wondering why you're not hearing me. Okay. We're having some issues, so... Okay. okay, no problem. All right. Okay. God hears us. Okay. Everything's doing well, though? Yeah. Everything's doing okay, Harry? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Friends, yeah. Let, us, let us join our hearts in prayer. Gracious, loving God, we offer you thanks this morning. And time that we can convene in whatever circumstances and where our lives may intersect at this place in this time. As we hear, as we heard from our message this morning, and you have reminded us that we are nothing but a lump of clay, sometimes shapeless, formless, not knowing how our lives may shape up to be. And 
but yet your hands continue to mold us and perfect us into something that is meaningful and purpose. We thank you for this reminder that of who we are and whose we are in you. Continue to mold us into something meaningful in your purpose. We pray for the uh, those whom we have named in uh, for prayer uh, prayer requests and also those whom we cherish in our heart, those whom we love and uh, who are if not who are experiencing pain and illnesses. We pray for those who uh, uh, for Stephen's brother-in-law Michael Houston uh, as he continues to have his uh, health situations that he needs to be addressed. We pray that you would guide him each day. Uh, we pray for uh, the niece, uh, Taylor, as well, as she uh, needs, uh, seeks the help, that help that she needs as well. Be with those who are beginning uh, the new academic semester at all levels, elementary, kindergarten, high school, and college even. We pray for all the staff who will be uh, helping to, to, to start this new semester and we pray that you guide them with their safeties and, uh, and for the, all the students in our system and all the, we pray that you, they will have a meaningful, purposeful academic semester. Keep them safe on and off the street in, in the school with all the staff that will be working in the educational system. Uh, we also pray for the, the world around us as many are still uh, suffering in many natural disasters and wildfires and extreme heating uh, heat conditions in the West and in the South and other parts of the world. We also have parts of the world that are suffering drought and uh, such as many parts of China and, and also droughts in Pakistan, many people who are flooded with, uh, with the abundance of rain while other parts are experiencing drought, sort, water sort, shortage, including in our own area as well, uh, that we are experiencing some level of drought monitoring. We pray for the easing up of the weather situation across the world, not only in our own neighborhood, but in our own backyard, but all around. We pray for the, the, the climate that, is, that, we are extreme, that we are experiencing, the extreme climate that we have had this past summer, that we could do our, we would continue to do our part to be better stewards, of God's kingdom and God's resource that is entrusted in us. All of this we pray, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For the offering, um, we ask that you would please drop off your offering in the back table uh, on your way out. There are uh, two offering plates today. One is for the regular offering and one is for the deacon's beneficence uh, offering. The deacon's offering is we will use the funding for, you know, to help support any uh, local needs in our community or in, the, in our area. So please give generously if you can. Uh, you could also give online using the, uh, our website and also from the QR code you see on the screen. Or you can send the check to our treasurer. 
Uh, we are beginning our new season of the Wednesday evening Bible study uh, this week. Yeah, this first Sunday, uh, first Wednesday of September at 7.30. Uh, you uh, received a, uh, a Zoom link from me uh, probably tomorrow, uh, Tuesday. Uh, we will begin, uh, we will be doing the Book of Romans. And uh, next, not tomorrow, but next Monday night, we will have our next session meeting at seven o'clock. So all the active elders, uh, please be available uh, for that meeting. Oh, and also next Sunday uh, is Sylvia Payne's 103rd birthday. So uh, if you're interested in, in joining me to, uh, to go to her backyard, we have a little uh, mini birthday celebration for her, just as we have done the last couple of years. Uh, she's doing very well. Uh, I spoke to her the other day. Um, her, her family is having their gathering a Saturday, the Saturday uh, of the 10th. So I said, okay, if they do it on a Saturday, they will do it on Sunday. So we'll do something uh, like we have in the past uh, couple of years. We'll, we'll sit in the backyard, just have a little uh, small gathering. If anybody's interested, uh, let me know. And if you want to bring something also, let's coordinate uh, and we could you know, uh, do something special for her. This is her 103rd birthday. I don't know anybody who's older than that, but she's, she's a walking um, miracle, I guess. So let me know if you're interested in joining me. Uh, we'll probably be uh, maybe around three o'clock. Uh, I told her I'll get there a little earlier to maybe help set up the table, uh, maybe around two. So if you want to help set up, uh, you may join me around two. Uh, but if you want to just uh, join later on, uh, so figure about three o'clock, we'll be there, okay? That's next Monday, uh, next Sunday. Friends, we are about to enter, uh, uh, prepare our hearts for the Holy Communion. So for those who are at home, please uh, prepare the element ahead of, uh, ahead of time. And as we prepare our hearts, let us sing hymn number 525. Let us break bread together. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun. O oh Lord, have mercy on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me.
Please be seated. You may refer to, to the inserts for the liturgy for the communion, or you may follow the screen as well. Friends, Christ has gathered us from east to west, from north to south. Join at this crossroad of our journeys and around this table of grace. Here we celebrate God's presence among us, united in Christ's spirit, broken and whole all at once. Let us read together. Here at the feast of God's holy word and holy meal, our eyes and ears are open so that we may all be made glad and filled with hope. For Christ has taught us not only to hear God's word, but to fulfill them in our actions and in truth. Through God's reconciling love and unconditional grace, transformation takes place around this table, where strangers become friends, sinners redeemed, brokenness restored, and wounded healed. Welcome to the table of the heavenly feast, the joyful celebration of the people of God. Christ invites those who confess their faith in him to eat this bread of life and to drink this cup of a new covenant. May the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. By your life-giving spirit, you have renewed us and recreated us. We have called upon your name. We have called upon your name and you have heard us. Therefore, we join our voices with saints and angels and all the faithful every time and place saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks that you have made us one with our Lord Jesus Christ as he is one with you and the Holy Spirit. With thanksgiving, we will receive this bread, which our Lord Jesus took after he blessed it, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. And with joy, we dedicate this cup that Jesus blessed and poured out for us, saying, this is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. With thanks and praise, we offer ourselves to you. O oh God, share this holy meal, remembering Christ's dying, rising, and praying. Come, Lord Jesus, Christ has died. Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who come to me shall never be hungry. Those who believe in me shall never thirst. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God.
please peel off the, uh, the transparent piece first and you take out the waiver and then you may peel up the silver piece at the bottom and try not to squish the bottom as you do it. So this way you could do it one step at a time. Okay. Friends, this is the bread of life. In the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in spirit, you have fed us with your body and quench us with your blood. We look forward to the day when you shall come again to fill our hearts with grace, peace, and hope. Call us now to go out to share your love to others. Humble our hearts so we may serve others wholeheartedly in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us now conclude our worship this morning by singing hymn number 761. Call as partners in Christ's ministry. Surround each other's soul 
sorrow with the calm that conquerors strive. May God pardon in our living of compassion to the increase. Messengers of faith thus giving hope and confidence and peace. Amen. May the God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus, so that together we may with one voice glorifying the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all until we meet again. All God's people say, Amen. O oh, my children, with my blessing, never alone. Waking, sleeping, I am with you, you are my own. In my last baptismal river, I have made you mine forever oh my children with my blessing you are my own friends may you have a blessed week and be a blessing to others Thank you.